Mi nombre es Griselda Barbosa, nací en México en una ciudad que se llama Culiacán, Sinaloa. Tenga, tengo 60 años de edad, nací en 1955. Me casé cuando tenía 17 años con Francisco Eguía López, de la cual tuve tres hijos, Cristian, Gina y Damián. Voy a mostrar el cuarto de Cristian. Cuando mi Cristian se movió con nosotros, decidimos mi marido y yo darles es, darle esta recámara, porque está más amplia y va a necesitar más espacio. Como ustedes pueden ver, miren, le decoramos con todo lo que a él le gusta. Pásale para enseñarte, miren, hicimos, hicimos este baño especial para él. Porque como ustedes saben, esta enfermedad va a necesitar mucha, mucha ayuda. Entonces decidimos hacerlo el año pasado. Él todavía se vale por sí mismo, se lava sus dientes, nosotros lo rasuramos y lo bañamos. I met Christian through some friends, went out to a bar. We ended up hitting it off. Um, he was working at um, a warehouse making sofas. Um, we ended up getting pregnant within the year of knowing each other. And uh, I didn't think anything. I saw some aggression in him, but I didn't think anything of it. He wasn't very cooperative in, in anything, and we couldn't understand why. Yeah. And, and it, it just, it got, worse instead of getting better. Cuando me nos enteramos de la enfermedad, Cristian siguió su vida rutinaria en Redlands, allá vivía con Gina, ellos vivían juntos. Ella siguió trabajando y venía, ya no podía manejar. Iba, iba en camión y trabajaba, ya no tra podía trabajar mucho, pero trabajaba limpiando las mesas. Le estaba muy feliz con su trabajo. Yo pensé que lo tenía ya todo controlado. Yo puedo con mis hijos, los voy a cuidar, no hay problema. Pero luego ya tengo la enfermedad yo, es muy difícil, porque mis hijos no cuentan con nadie más que conmigo. Cristian, yo estuve inválida como por seis meses. Cristian iba a mi cuarto y me decía llorando, mamá, ¿por qué no puedes caminar? No sabía cómo decirle a mi hijo que tenía cáncer. Me amo que tenía, tengo cuatro años. Our son, Sebastian, was born 6 He was... Sorry. He 
he was eight pounds and nine and a half ounces. Big baby. He started school, um, had the most beautiful handwriting. Um, he did well, first, second, third grade. But his regression started um, in third grade. And uh, we thought it was because it was ADD. ADD, or they also thought it was autism. So when we found out that Christian in 2004, Christian actually had some family members come down from Mexico and his family saw him, how he was moving. And they said, you have the same disease as grandma which is the grandma that passed away recently at that time. And so that's when Christian and his mom ended up getting diagnosed with Huntington's chorea. So when they told me the news, I didn't, I already knew that Sebastian was, or had the same disease. Hey, what's up? ¿Dónde está ahorita eh, Sebastián? En cero. En cero. Me escondió. No sé qué más de, del cuarto. No sé cómo esta, esta que pintaron. ¿Quién es una de esa gente? Me dio. Me dio. O oh, Sebastián. ¿A cuál? ¿De los lentes? Sí. ¿Cuántos años tenía ahí en esa foto? Ocho. ¿Ocho años? Sí. Me dio. ¿Eres tú? Me conté de baby. Ah. Es mí. ¿Cuántos años tenías ahí? Como un año, como seis meses. Oh, recién, como recién nacido. Se me va y se lo tira. Mexico. <laughs> so in the early stages you're going to get um, some of the sort of more emotional and psychiatric um, features like depression, like anxiety. Um, and some people get aggressive uh, behaviors and then in the middle period is when you start to see some of the more movement disorders. Individuals with HD tend to have a more depressive mood quite often and they can have emotional changes. Some of it's frustration, some of it is possibly due to some of the medications that they may need to take. Other individuals actually have um, a formal psychotic breakdown and have hallucinations. Uh, my name is Tanya Medina and I work for Harupa Unified School District. And I also work for, I'm, a, I'm also part of a nonprofit organization called Help for AT International that helps people with Huntington's disease. The way that I'm connected with Huntington's disease was because three years ago, I found out that my brother 
was uh, at risk for Huntington's disease. I didn't know anything about the disease. But then when I started researching, I started attending events and I started getting more and more involved and I saw that, they, that we needed to uh, create more awareness and, and uh, just uh, make this disease more well known. So I, I decided to just keep moving forward and, and here I am. Hey Gary, how are you? Huh. Doing good? Yeah. How was your day? Uh, Fine. Yeah, this is a, a picture of Gary when he used to play football. Let me, let me show you. This is Gary right here, number 24. And those are his teammates. They went undefeated, 10 and 0. We're hoping that with this research, um, we could find at least a treatment that will uh, delay the onset of Huntington's disease and probably lead, lead to a cure. So this is very important that this research gets started because if it, if it doesn't begin, then it, we won't know where it could lead to. But this is the only and the most promising hope that the Huntington's community has. Stem cell research, silencing the gene, um, and so we are fighting for that. We are um, fighting for the HD community because we need, the, we need those treatments now. We need the research to start now because our families are suffering and our families are dying. Stem cells are cells that can divide repeatedly. They can divide indefinitely. And a characteristic of all stem cells is that once they divide and produce two daughter cells, one of the daughter cells will become a stem cell and one daughter cell has the potential to differentiate into a different type of cell. Um, we have stem cells in our brains, and as you know, uh, patients that have Huntington's disease um, lose some of the neurons as they get older, usually in middle age. They degenerate, and that handicaps the person tremendously. But we could take uh, cells, for example, skin cells from a patient with Huntington's disease, and those could be converted into what are called induced pluripotent stem cells, those cells can be differentiated into the cells that are damaged in the brains of Huntington's patients. And once those are differentiated and grown in culture, we could actually use those in several different ways. Um, for example, we could study their pathology and try to understand better what makes the stem cells in the patient degenerate. So it gives an in vitro model for studying the pathogenesis of the disease. Another thing that could be done is we could screen various different drugs on those cells and see if we could find drugs that keep them from dying. In other words, keep them alive instead of losing them. And potentially those drugs could be given to patients with the disease to try to ameliorate or cure the disease. If a couple is planning on having children and one of the parents is a carrier of the Huntington's disease gene, they can undergo a procedure which will guarantee that they can get that gene out of their family. The couple would undergo in vitro fertilization. That will produce a number of embryos that can be transferred back to the mother. But before the transfer occurs, a physician can go in and take a single cell from each one of those embryos, and they can analyze that cell and determine if it's carrying the, the gene for Huntington's disease. If it is an embryo that is carrying that particular gene, it would not be transferred back to the mother. Only the good embryos that are, are normal and do not have the Huntington's defect would go back into the uterus. And that would guarantee that that couple would have offspring that would not be carrying the gene for Huntington's disease. So as you may know, there's a very strong group of advocates, patient advocates in the Inland Empire, in fact, in the, in the state and in the country, for this particular disease. And one thing that strikes me as very important is that the patient advocate groups have really reached out to the researchers and they've gone out of their way to meet them and to work with them. Uh, we know each other. There's very good interaction between the advocate groups and the actual researchers, which helps tremendously with the research. Tengo la esperanza, estoy segura de que van a encontrar la cura para la enfermedad de Huntington. Estoy segura de que va a haber algo.
para mi hija Gina y mi nieto Xavier, si es que la tiene, porque no sabemos, él está en riesgo, pero van a encontrar algo. Yo sé que todo lo que estamos haciendo vamos a lograrlo porque estamos unidos. Estamos logrando muchas cosas y se va a lograr, estoy segura.